The most profound contribution in the history of evolutionary thought comes from Charles Darwin, who was inspired by his voyage on the Beagle. Darwin was born in 1809 and lived until 1882. He originally went to Edinburgh University at the age of 16 to study medicine, but he was always a very sensitive man and he was appalled at the sight of people suffering through surgery without any form of anesthesia. He then moved to Cambridge University and became a divinity student. And upon graduation, he joined the Royal Navy as an unpaid naturalist at the age of only 22. Darwin traveled on HMS Beagle on an extraordinary journey around the world that started in 1831 and finally returned to England in 1836. On this journey, they passed down the east coast of South America, visited the Falkland Islands in the South Atlantic, went around the Cape of Good Horn to the Galapagos, to various islands in the South Pacific, Tahiti, then over to New Zealand, Australia, around the Cape of Good Hope in Southern Africa, went back to South America briefly before finally coming back up to England. It was an extraordinary journey. Wherever they landed, Darwin's job was to go on land, collect specimens, and as he did so, he was always thinking about the patterns of the distribution of these brand new life forms that had never been described before by Western science. One of the most important stops along this whole journey was at the Galapagos, where these are barren volcanic islands, famous for their large marine iguanas and also their finches. He spent enough time on there to realize that the finches on this archipelago were very similar to each other and yet subtly different from each other. So you have a variety of these finches. So some are ground finches. They eat seeds. They're mostly foraging on the ground. Some are small, some medium, some large. You had some that would go to a cactus and even pull spines off in some case, peck at the fruit of the cactus, and so on. So there's a variety of different habitats that they would occupy on these simple islands and a diversity of forms. And what he began to realize is that the shape of their beak reflected the kind of diet that they had. That these would have relatively short stubby beaks so they could crack open seeds. And these had more pointed ones so that they could catch insects. While there, he got the notion that perhaps these all descend from a common ancestor. And so he developed a family tree for the Galapagos finches. He said that, well, these ground finches must all have a more recent common ancestor, that all these that have more woodpecker-like traits must have a more recent common ancestor, likewise the ones that were not woodpecker-like but still like to eat insects, and so on. But he reckoned you could go back far enough and they would all have a single common ancestor. And he reckoned that that common ancestor originated on the mainland of South America that somehow f got blown out in a storm or otherwise made it onto this empty archipelago and its descendants then diversified to all this different form. So on his journey around the world, he was noticing all kinds of patterns. For example, a group of mammals that are, he'd never seen before in Europe were armadillos. These are sort of armor-plated things, eat a lot of insects. They can roll up into a ball and protect themselves against predators. But these are only found in the New World, South America, and he'd heard they also happened up here in North America. And he also realized that you know, if they found a fossil of something that looks like an armadillo, that likewise is sound, found only in the New World. So, single common ancestor, diversification within the same geographical region. So Darwin's travels on the Beagle revealed to him repeated examples of diversification from common ancestry.